another tutorial video. Today's one is in conjunction with Tonic Craft Kit number 71, which is called Marshmallow Hugs, which has a gorgeous die set, and I've used some of the dice to cut some of these pieces, but a gorgeous mug die set that you can create um, into a three-dimensional aspect as well. You've got um, a spoon, you've got like a drip of cream, you've got this little extra element to decorate the mug with, you've got marshmallows, you've got wispy bits of steam, you've got the ellipsis to put the drink inside the cup as well, um, and you also have decorative details and uh, like a whippy bit of cream as well within the die set. You have coordinating stamps and also in this month's kit the elements that we're getting are some ribbon, either 3mm or 9mm. You're getting a Nouveau glue pen. You're also getting um, a Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive full size bottle. You're getting a white Nouveau uh, crystal drop in the simply white colour. You're getting the Shooting Stars Glimmer Paste, which is what we're going to be using in this tutorial. And you're also getting the Bermuda Pink uh, Embellishment Mousse, which we're using in this tutorial as well. You are also getting um, a pencil case too, which is really lovely to keep all of your elements in. And there's also an extra bonus uh, free gift in the kit as well. I think that's everything that's in there. But if you want to go and see a full unboxing of the kit, plus multiple samples of gift tags, uh, cards, and also turning one of the mugs into a Frankenstein's monster as well, um, then go check out my unboxing video from yesterday as well. But for today's video, we're going to be doing um, a tutorial on the kind of grouting technique. I've previously heard the term grouting for the debossed side of an embossing folder and you scrape like a texture paste over it and it falls into the debossed areas, kind of like you're grouting between tiles. But I also love doing this technique with die cuts. Um, I don't know if I have done a talking video with this technique in before. I've maybe done it for samples and explained it before, but I don't think I've ever actually demonstrated it. I have done it in sped up videos though, um, quite a while back, and my first time of doing this kind of technique was actually when the expanding mousse launched because it looks fantastic with expanding mousse. Basically you have your die cut stuck to a piece of card, you scrape the mousse over the top flatly to the die cut and then with an expanding mousse you can heat it and it will puff up and then you can put another die cut over the top and you'll get that puffed effect through it. But because we've got um, embellishment mousse and glimmer paste in this kit plus we do also have the gloss drops which we could uh, bring into this as well. Um, I wanted to show you that you can do that grouting technique with this too. So this back piece here has been grouted. I cut the basic shape for the layer to go on the mug, plus I cut another one of the basic shape with the detail cut in from white, stuck them both on top of each other, grouted it, and then when it dried I stuck a blue die cut over the top. So I'm going to show you how to do that uh, from right from the beginning, which layers you sort of stick together. But I also thought, whilst I'm showing you this, that's quite a quick sort of thing to show you so I thought I would also show you how to do it with the uh, whipped cream element and I think we'll go with the gloss white with a little bit of the um, glimmer paste on that and then I also thought I would show you how you can use multiple dies but you don't have to layer up these multiple dies in the exact same position on the piece that goes underneath you can actually create two separate pieces that when it is dry you can layer them underneath and cut between it um, so you don't have to make something identical to this which would be rather difficult to do when you've just randomly cut the two dies. If you're cutting two different dies it's easy to do because you can take them together and cut it again but when you're using the same die twice um, it's quite hard to get the exact same panel again um, and I thought we could do that kind of technique. When you do the finished card you could just put a banner across that middle section so it kind of looks like um, a flat-ended oval kind of shape um, on the card and I also wanted to show you with this one, how you can tint your glimmer paste as well. The silver glimmer paste is a gorgeous one to do this with, um, and I thought we'd use a couple of Distress Ink reinkers to change the colour of this, give it a bluey kind of tone to go with those snowflakes as well. So just sort of extending the tutorial a little bit so it's not just the one technique that I did on a card for the kit. I'm also uh, going to show you it with a couple of different ideas as well.
So firstly, I'm going to show you the technique from start to finish, but with the other pattern. So on this mug, I did uh, the white die cut onto white card, then I did all of the embellishing, and then I put the textured arctic blue card over the top. But for this one, I've cut the other panel, and I'm going to do the exact same thing that I did on this card, so it shows you how you can recreate that kind of effect. Um, but I'm using the other panel, which has like horses or kind of like reindeer hidden within there and then we can put a pink die cut over the top to show the sort of difference of like um, a tone on tone effect with the mousse um, underneath there as well. So for this or any kind of element where you're actually wanting it to be a specific shape rather than uh, putting another piece behind an aperture in a background you want to start with the solid shape plus the detailed shape, cut just from any cardstock. This could be scrap cardstock that maybe you've uh, done some stamping and it's gone wrong or something, or, you know, just cardstock that doesn't agree with uh, ink blending or doesn't agree with watercolour techniques or something like that, just any sort of cardstock this can be. I'm just using my normal 300 GSM white cardstock. Then you want to put the glue on the back of it. I will tap it off, but it doesn't actually matter if we're messy with this glue because we're going to be uh, grouting all of the areas so you don't have to be too precise with sticking this layer down you can be as haphazard as you want to so we can just press all of that down you just want to make sure all of that detail is nicely stuck rather than worrying about glue oozing out of anywhere you're mostly just wanting to make sure the detail is stuck so that when we scrape a palette knife over the top we're not going to disturb any of that detail in there so we've got this ready then we want to take our embellishment mousse and we're also going to bring in some of our glimmer paste as well. So we can go in with our palette knife to our embellishment mousse. If you have an older mousse, I would recommend um, sort of squishing it around on your glass mat first so you get a nice creamy consistency. This one is relatively new because this is my pot from the Coral Skies colour trend and that wasn't too long ago that that came out. So it's probably only been opened for like a year. Um, and then you just want to scrape it on. Um, you can do this as haphazardly or as um, you know neatly as you want to. If you have small palette knives, you could be very precise with where you're putting the different mediums on here. But I'm just going to spread some of the mousse over that detail. And you don't have to be too neat about it as well, because even if you're making these edges mucky, we can trim those edges off before we stick this one on, and it'll be fine. So we'll just add some of that mousse, scraping it back down to the die cut so it's basically level with the die cut and you especially want to make it level with the die cut if you're using an expanding mousse. This is just a regular mousse though. Um, then I know that's a little bit wasteful but I'm just going to wipe that on my kitchen roll and switch over to the glimmer paste and take a little bit of this out and then swipe this in the leftover areas. You could definitely do this just with the glimmer paste or just with the mousse as well. I just wanted to show you how they do work nicely together and it kind of adds um, a glittery effect over the top of some of the mousse as you're sort of spreading it out and getting a, a thin application on there as well. You can do this onto a surface too. You don't have to hold it up in, in midair as well. You can do it however you feel comfy. But you can see it sounds like you're kind of like buttering toast. Um, but that's kind of how you do the grouting effect. And then you would just wait for this to dry and then place your other die cut back over the top. So you can see how this is going to be really subtle when it is dry. I will come back when it's dry and show you all of these um, stuck back together or we can stick them back together together as well. Because I can show you how those other ones fit behind the apertures on the card too. So that is uh, the original way that I had done this for a project. Then I wanted to show you how you can do this with your gloss drops plus your glimmer paste to create a kind of effect on the sort of like whippy cream or icing for this card. So I will just wipe this up for now. Actually we won't need any more of that will we because we're going to do a different technique so I'll come back so for the cream element, we're going to go with a mixture of the gloss white drops and a little bit of the glimmer paste as well. But definitely you could just use one or the other if you want to. So we're going to just squeeze some of this onto our palette knife. Oh, air bubble. Just squeeze a nice big dollop onto there. And then you can just swipe this over your die cut. Again, this is one outline die cut cut on and stuck onto a solid of the die cut as well. 
I think this probably would look really lovely just with the gloss drops. It would give a really lovely uh, whippy cream kind of look because of the effect that you can get. So I might actually just do that. I just go with the gloss white drops on this one because it's giving a really lovely sort of effect of um, a cream kind of consistency. The way you can build that sort of texture into it. It might level out a bit as it dries because it is a, a nouveau drop which are self leveling. But we can kind of add that texture in, see if it'll stay once it's dry. So there we've got our whipped cream version, which you could just leave like that to be honest. You don't really have to put another die cut over the top, but we will do to finish off this kind of a technique. And then the final one that I wanted to show you is using your glimmer paste but tinting it with different colours. So for this one, I have got my two separate sections on just two random pieces of card and then when these are dry we'll just cut them close up to that detail and we can place them one at a time behind the two different areas on our background panel so it doesn't matter that they're not in the exact same position and I'll move this cream out the way so I don't end up uh, colouring it with anything and we'll just bring out a big blob of our glim paste and I'll put the lid back on this and now first of all we're going to turn it to be broken china coloured so I'm just going to use I think probably just one drop is probably going to be enough because a reinker is so concentrated you could definitely use your aqua flows for this as well but go for one of the deeper colours so you're not having to add much into it to change the colour of the glimmer paste and we can turn that into a gorgeous blue toned glimmer paste so if you only have this one from this kit um, you can actually play around with different colour variations which is lovely and then we can just scrape this through the openings in this stencil or the uh, die cut and you could definitely just go with the blue uh, with the light blue but I think I'm going to add a tiny bit more glimmer paste out and I'm going to just add some chipped sapphire reinker to this as well and create a deeper darker blue tone to go with this you could have gone with silver and blue together or you could have brought the silver and two blues together but just one drop of chipped sapphire distress reinker and then oh, look at that deep dark colour that that creates really beautiful and obviously um, it this is a water-based reinker, so it is only colouring the medium. It's not colouring the glitter, so technically the glitter is still going to be silver. So you're still going to have that silver colour in here, but you're just adding on that beautiful uh, dark blue colour with the suspension that the glitter is held in. And you can just swipe this over any of the leftover areas. We can add a little bit over here. And there we go, we've got our tinted glimmer paste, so it's still going to have silver glitter, but all of the um, medium that that glitter is held in is now the two different tones of blue, so we've got uh, broken china and chipped sapphire, so really really gorgeous. So I'll leave all of these to dry and then I'll come back and show you how to finish off these elements for your cards. Okay, so I think they're all pretty much dry now. I did try to force dry um, the Nouveau Drops and they kind of bubbled, but I quite like that effect. It gives like a, an aired cream kind of effect. I quite like the look of that, so uh, I'm quite pleased I did that. So I'll do that one in a second, but the main one that is the decorative piece for the cup, we can stick this over there and you can see that beautiful effect that you get but if you have where you've been a bit messy with your mousse and stuff if you have little bits um, hanging out the edges the easiest way to combat that is to just take your scissors before you stick the two together it's much easier to do it before and just trim off that very tiny like outside sliver of the two die cuts cut together and you'll just remove that little outside edge piece and then nothing will show through when you add the um, specialty cardstock one on the top. So if we add a bit of adhesive behind all of the elements on here. And you might be thinking, why bother doing this kind of technique? Why, why not just spread the paste or the mousse onto a piece of cardstock and then just stick the detail one on top? You can definitely do it that way, but... Um, 
is a little bit harder to like smoothly stick down um, a die cut onto like Glimmer Paste and Nouveau Mousse because if you haven't got the die cut there to guide you it's probably going to be a little bit lumpy and bumpy but because you're scraping against the die cut it's going to be a nice flat surface for you to put this back onto plus you're not wasting anything then you're only applying the product where you need it to be if you're doing it like applying the product to a piece of card and then putting this on you might be using more than you would if you do it this way or I suppose you could just apply it to the basic shape and then stick one on but I feel like you get a different effect doing it this way and I really like the way it turns out so that's why I thought I would show you this kind of technique but you definitely can just put the Nouveau products down onto a piece of card and stick a detail one over the top you don't have to go through the grouting process but I just really like the effect that it gives I think it is a little bit different you could definitely do both actually do both and then see what you prefer um, but yeah, it gives a really lovely effect for a panel to go on the little cup. Um, or you can do this for any of your boxes that you have as well. It doesn't have to just be what I'm showing you here. It can be for anything. Then, another really simple one, but we used the drops on this one. And you can see that cool little bit of bubbled texture where I've slightly overheated the drops, trying to get them to dry the last little bit. But we can um, take our glue and add adhesive to the back of the extra detailed die cut. And then we can tap the excess off and add this over the top. And just line it directly up over the other one. And then you're going to have that gorgeous outline effect to those Nouveau drops. I just think it gives a really lovely look and it kind of defines those areas of, of cream as well. Um, it sort of goes and gives you more definition really between like with the gloss and the the mat of the cardstock so that is the the cream swirl to go on the top which could go on the top of here I mean that could just be a bowl with um, a dessert and it doesn't have to be a cup if you're not having the cup anywhere near it it can just be a bowl it doesn't matter about perspective or size wise you could have the cream inside the bowl like that so that is those two versions and then this is the version um, where we've actually created our own background panel first and then we have our two sections that we want to put behind the background panel but we've done them separately so if we look at the background panel we know there's not much space here so we know we're going to have to cut quite close up to the edge over here so on both of these we'll cut quite close up to there because we need enough room in that little gap that's there to fit this little edge piece of both of these pieces to get them close enough to just fit directly behind the detail. So I think that should be okay. I think that'll be fine. And then for the outsides, we've got more leeway around the outsides, but we can just cut these randomly like that to be a shaped panel to go behind those decorative apertures. So, what you want to do to stick this together, there's a little something from my die cutting plate, oh it's come off now, a little bit of blue. Um, we now want to stick these directly behind here, so we can take our fine tip glue, we want to go all the way around the edge, so we're going to get a good bond all the way around the edges, and you can see what I was saying, uh, I think it was in my up close video, how it kind of has this crisscross geometric pattern when you're gluing it you kind of realize that it's got this geometric design within the snowflakes and then tap the excess of that off and place this directly over the top of the one that we have grouted so we can place that get one piece lined up and then the rest of it should fall into place really nicely and we can press this down Just slide it around until everything goes exactly where it is supposed to be. It is quite a fine die cut, so some pieces can move a little bit. And especially when we were sticking it down, they could have moved a little bit as well. But we've now got that gorgeous design of glitter underneath our aperture design. Then yeah, there should just be enough room there. So now we can do the same thing again. And actually, to make sure this doesn't move... 
we can actually come in with a little bit of sellotape um, and stick it behind here sorry you can't see that to make sure uh, this panel doesn't come off whilst the glue is drying we can just stick a little bit of sellotape behind there just make sure it's still in the right position then we can flip this back over add some more wet adhesive all the way around the perimeter and we can go along all of those lines of the snowflake as well and then tap off the excess again and then place this directly over the top of the other one so you can see how easy it is so you could do this with multiple things if you want to use the same die cut pattern multiple times on the same card um, so it's impossible to kind of get two panels that look identical to each other to be able to fit perfectly behind you can just do uh, in separate sections and then press this down I'm being a little bit careful where I press just in case any of that glimmer paste doesn't quite dry but you can press that all into position maneuver it around as much as you need to because we've used the wet glue on there and then you can see we had an, uh, plenty of space between the two of them then and we can just put a bit more sellotape on the back just to make sure they stay nicely stuck in place And then there we have our finished panel for a card that's got that gorgeous grouted effect behind the die cut. So it looks different to using glitter card um, and we've created our own custom colours of the glimmer paste by using our re for our distress inks as well. And I think just a, a banner of a sentiment across there, I just cut a wonky parallelogrammy, no, wonky quadrilateral kind of shape to go across there, but it could be... Um, a wordy, any sort of uh, foil sentiment that you've done, a stamped and heat embossed sentiment, you could just leave it as it is if you want, it could be a scripty die cut sentiment, whatever you want to put across the centre section there, you could even put ribbon across there actually, if you got the 9mm ribbon in your kit, the 9mm ribbon would look fantastic going across the centre of it, and then you could put a circular sentiment right in the centre or off to one side as well, and that would look really lovely. So. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial video showing you how to do this kind of grouted technique that I've spoken about quite a few times in videos and explained how I used to love doing it with expanding mousses but you can do it with your normal mousse and your glimmer paste and you can tint the colour of your glimmer paste and change it as well so if you only have um, the moonstone or the silver or even the gold um, you can actually change the colour of that medium that the colour glitter is in and uh, create some different effects for your cards as well. So really hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Um, hopefully you found it interesting to see kind of how, like how you would create this technique. And I'm sure you have tons of different products in your stash that you could do this kind of technique with as well. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you again in the next video. Bye.